Hello everyone. So in my previous video, we had discussed uh, the data analysis on Cloud Kitchen data set using Excel. And in this video, we'll be using the same data set and doing the same set of questions using Tableau. So let me uh, move to the data set. Suppose I'm a customer with a customer ID, this value. So this is my, uh, this is my custom ID and I have given an order which is an order ID, this. Uh, and I have ordered three things. One is cheese skewers, Oreo cheese cheese, and ultimate tawuk sandwich. So now uh, this order has been made by me on 13th May at uh, 1.40 a.m. in the night. And it took uh, time about, uh, it took some about 10 minutes time and it got uh, prepared in 1.51. And I had ordered this uh, three things from a restaurant which had a brand name Ford, and I had ordered through a delivery partner, which is partner two. Uh, so when the cloud kitchen has the order, they have different kitchens in different places. So the kitchen name is uh, an hypothetical name called Whitefield Order, and the final bill of my order was on one seventy five. Like this one order, we have multiple orders which will have one item or two items or three items. So now let's move to the question. So there are different metrics which can be uh, calculated through this data. I have taken some seven questions to answer here. So let's look at one by one. So first I want to basically find what is the most popular item. So all these questions we'll be doing in Tableau. So I have opened a Tableau public uh, software here. If you want to download this Tableau public software, it is free of course. You can just click on download, download for Tableau public on Google and you can basically click on the first link itself and it will uh, land you to the Tableau public website and you can just click on the download the app and then download Tableau public. It will ask you for a few details. And once you sign in, it will download the app. So it is free of course. The only thing is you can't uh, save any work in Tableau in your local machine all the uh, analysis or the uh, charts will be saved on Tableau public. So your data would be for public. It won't be uh, private to a local system. So that's the issue, but yes, still you can create uh, different visualization, which can be good to add it in your PowerPoint presentation or any document, and then probably share it with your uh, customers. So let's move to the Cloud Kitchen data set. So for this, I have to, uh, I'll just save this data and click on Tableau Public. In Tableau Public, I have to connect to a data source. So the first thing I uh, connect to a Microsoft Excel file and I connect with this Cloud Kitchen data, which is available in this folder. All right, so I have two sheets over here. One is sales and one is questions. So I need to do analysis of visualization on my sales data. So I just click and drag drop over here. Once I drag and drop over here, I'll basically see a sample of the data over here and the name of here. This is ideally a data source tab. So what we'll be doing is we'll be going to a sheet one tab so that we can create some calculation and visualization over it. In Tableau, usually you have, it works somewhat similar to an Excel pivot table where you have the uh, bar of different options over here. You have the data fields over here. And this is the area where you can create uh, some visualizations. So here, this is a section where you can add any columns or anything in the rows to see those values in the rows and columns set as a specified. In filters, if you want to filter any particular uh, field value, you know, field you can put that and in marks you have different set of options that if you want any uh, field to differentiate by color do you want to change the size of the bar chart or the pie chart which are created do you want to add a text so we'll go through a uh, few of them in our question itself the first thing is which is the most popular item and uh, for that one what we'll be doing is first we'll take the item name and put it in rows so we have all the item names listed over here. Now our next thing is we need to know how many orders have been there for each item. So we'll take the order ID and uh, we need to take a count distinct of that order ID. 
So for that purpose, what we'll do, we can do it through many ways. So I'll just take a new one simple way. I'll just move this order ID to text field. So when I do this, I get each order ID for each item name over here. So I don't need the order ID as a text. I need the count of it. So I'll just click over here and uh, go to this option called measure. And then I just click on count distinct. So when I do this, I get all each item and how many times it has been ordered. Now, if I want to know which is the most popular item, I'll just click over here and sort it using count all right. So now that's my first question done that I know which is the most popular item. I'll just name this as most popular item. Now our next question is uh, which partner had the most orders? So we just use the same thing. We just uh, right click over here and click on duplicate. Now instead of item name, what do we need? We need uh, the partner name itself. So we just click on partner name and put it on top of this so it replaces it. So we get to know that each partner has how many orders. Now let's move to the next question. Next question suggests that which is the brand, which brand is the most popular. So we'll do the same thing. We'll just right click over this, click on duplicate, change this to brand and change the field name also to brand. So here it is quite simple to get any distribution. If we have multiple records in Excel, we can just quickly drag and drop and count distinct using this clear value. So now uh, let's move to the fourth question. Which kitchen takes the longest and the shortest time to prepare? So for this, uh, if you notice, for each order, we'll have uh, multiple records. And uh, if we have multiple records, we need to group it. Like for each order ID, we need to group all the times by taking one time itself. So if we have the same uh, order date and the prepared date, what we'll be doing is we'll be taking the if you may even if you take the average of it, the median of it, the maximum of it, or min of it, it will all be the same because for each order ID, the time to prepare, which will be calculated, which is the difference between prepared date and the order date, will ideally be the same. So we'll be doing the same thing. Uh, what we'll be doing is let's go to a new sheet. So these three options you have a sheet, you have a dashboard, and a story here. So in the sheet for first, let's try to do this. Uh, we'll get the order ID over here. Once we get the order ID over, we need the time over here. So prepare date. What we'll be doing is we'll just put. So first we'll put the order date at the side of it. Once we, when we put the order date, as date has multiple uh, elements in it, it a tableau by default shows a year over it. So what we'll do, we'll, we want to see the exact date over here. So we'll just click over here and move to this exact date. So when we move to the order exact date, uh, it automatically switches from a color blue to color green. What does these two colors represent is basically order ID is mentioned in a discrete format and it has a label it is considering order id as a label and showing its exact value but order date is an aggregate function aggregate means you can do a sum or a minimum or a max over it but uh, and it automatically shows them an order date so usually these are continuous variable and these are discrete variables if you notice there's a line over here these things are a discrete uh, dimensions what we call it in tableau and these are a measure and a continuous value where we can do some aggregations over it. So we need the exact date. So what we do, we change this from continuous to discrete to show us the value. So we just click on discrete and we get the value. So if you notice, if I want to know uh, the order date formula, I'll just click double click over here and choose order date. So I'll do the same thing. What I'll do is, uh, I'll put the prepared date. So when I put the prepared date, it automatically turns into here. So now I'll just try a different method. I'll just double click over here. I know I have just have to take the prepared date. I'll just uh, edit it over here itself. And that's it. I got this uh, prepared date. So I don't have to go through multiple uh, clicks and changing it to discrete. 
So I have two dates over here. Now uh, to calculate the time difference, what I'll be doing is I'll just create a new field over here. So once we have a new field, I'll just rename this to time to prepare. As we'll be, uh, as we'll for one one order ID, we'll have multiple uh, values, same values of order and prepare date. We'll be taking or uh, grouping it by order ID itself. So for grouping, uh, in W, we call that grouping as fixed function, and here we have to fix it by order ID, and then I just put a cool, and then I have to just uh mention what is the difference uh, between here. So I'll just put a max and then I'll calculate prepare date minus order date. And that's it. I have to close this fix function using a fully break bracket. And uh, here I have the complete function and I'll just click on OK. So when I do this, uh, I'll just put it in text. So if you notice, we get some values like 0 0.007 and uh, these functions completely works and gives us the, gives the difference in dates in number of days. So to convert this into minutes, what we'll be doing is we'll just multiply this by a num number. So we we'll multiply this by 24 and multiply this again by 60. So here we just take a pair logic that one day has 24 hours and each hour has 60 minutes. We just apply that logic and click here. So we just move it again over here and we get 10 minutes. So doing a rough check, it took 1.40 a.m. and it got delivered 1.51, uh, prepared 1.51. So basically you have around 11 or 10 minutes on difference and that is exactly what is showing here. Using this as a sample, data set and we'll just duplicate this and we'll just move all of these things and just put kitchen name so i'll just put kitchen name over here i'll just select uh, and i'll just click on control and select these two fields as well and then just remove them so here i find what is the sum of uh, the time to prepare for each children in for each kitchen name I really need to know an average. So I'll just click over here, go to measure and select average. So when I do this, I get an average of each order by each kitchen. So how we can just verify it, we can just put a kitchen name over here. And we did that big mod has two orders and one is six, seven, and one is 18 minutes. And when we select these two, we get a uh, sum of it, 25.7. So that's correct. And we, when we take an average, it comes to about 12 minutes. And that's what we get over here. So this, this is the thing which we get over here. Now, uh, let's move to the next question. How much time does the most popular item take to prepare in different kitchens? So if you notice, uh, uh, the pop most popular kitchen item was French fries. So we'll just take a filter over here. So I'll just, let me just duplicate this. Let me put the item name over here. So when I do this, I realize that Big Mall had, took 18 minutes and uh, James Road took 21 minutes. But this is ideally not correct because uh, for this year, what we are taking is we are taking time to prepare for, for the order and not the order item. And we really don't have the, uh, the time for preparing French fries in that particular order. So what we'll be doing is we'll take an average of it. So what do you mean by that is for each order, let's put the item names somewhere here. If you notice this particular order item has five items and it took seven minutes only. So the idea is to basically divide the seven minutes by the number of items in that particular order. So we get to know that what is the average amount of time of uh, for preparing one item. So for this, what we need, we need to calculate how many number of items are there in for each order. So with this, we'll create again a new field. Number of items per order. 
and we will be using the fixed or the group by function again for each order id we need the count of uh, item name and we choose this once we do this we have this item and uh, to show it over here we can do it add as as a text so when we do it as a text we get this value below this value so if you want to get this value on the side of it, what what is one of the best trick is we can just double click over it. So when we double click on it, we get a new column itself and it will show us uh, the number of items. If you notice this for this order ID, we have five items and we have seven units. Now we need to calculate uh, the average time taken for each item. So we'll again do calculation time to prepare item for so we'll just do, do a simple calculation we'll just do time to prepare the order divided by number of items per order once we do this i'll just double click this and for that time to prepare an order is 1.53 minutes so i'll just use this number in our kitchen popular item I do time to prepare this. I'll just put it over here. I have nine minutes, and this is the sum of it. I'll just change this to average. So, in on an average, we get to know that in white field it took 2.7 minutes and 6.7 in uh, gene row. So, this is the way how we take an average of the time. Now, let's move to the next question. How many orders were prepared below and above average preparation time? So for this, we'll have to calculate what is the average uh, time for each order. What we'll do, we'll do is we'll just take this and duplicate this. I'll just move this to the end. And okay, let, let it remain this time. I'll just, I need only the order ID and the time it took to prepare. So what I'll do, I'll just uh, remove, okay, let's remove everything. I'll just put the order ID over here and time to prepare the order. So I know this order took 10.3 minutes. So I want to know what is the average for uh, this time. So I'll just remove the order ID, get the sum of it. I'll just click over here and select the average. So I know the average is 10.86. So if I want to know how many are above or below it, what I can do is I can use a filter as well. So I'll just put this same thing in the filter. And I want the average of this thing. I'll just click on next. And uh, let's keep it the same range. And uh, I'll just put the order ID over here. So I'll just uh, click there on this and click on show filter. When I show the filter, if you notice the, uh, <clears throat> the filter is basically filtered on 10.86. If I want to know the number of orders which were below this, I can just increase this and I get all the order IDs which are below this order. And if I want to get uh, the number of orders which are above this average, so I can just in include this set and I get to know, easily get to know that how many orders were there. And here I get 11 rows, 11 marks. So basically 11 orders out of total orders were uh, above uh, the time. So out of uh, 11 orders after 33, so I can easily get to know about that. In the next question, we are trying to see uh, what is the distribution of final bill by brand. So let's do the same thing over here. So if we go to this sample, I know for each order there are different item names. So let me just remove the item name from here. And uh, let's ignore the time to prepare. I'll just move this. I'm the number of uh, orders. So now I need to know what is the maximum bill of it. So maximum bill is also same for each order ID. So I need to also do the order by for the same thing. So I'll click on calculator field, and final bill for each order, I just fixed by order ID and then just calculate the max of final bill. So when I do this, I get the value 
sum over here and you get the value 50 point five is the bill value now i need to know it by each brand so i'll just go to the brand sheet itself and put this final bill for each order so when i put this i get for brand one uh, the total bill of amount is 219 for brand two and 205 and so on if i want to create any bar charts or anything i can directly uh, put these some measure values in those or columns it will change the way how i view it so if i just then we just click a simple set partner name if i want to create a simple bar chart i'll just move this to columns and i'll see a bar chart over and if i want to show the values i can just click over here on text and you can see the values so similarly uh, we can explore the other things as well and we can create charts over here the creation of more charts is available in this section that is created on automatic and we have bar line area and other options and also in this section we have show me and we can create every uh, different charts based on the measures of the rows and columns which we have given so uh, if you like the content please uh, like share and subscribe the video that will be appreciated thank you so much for watching the video